best stories in sports. This is an E60 feature presentation. I'm here at home. I'm just able to enjoy life and breathe. I'm not in Afghanistan. I don't have to worry about my friends getting hurt anymore. I can just run. Kyle, you not only saved your brother in arms, you displayed a heroism in the blink of an eye that will inspire for generations. <laughs> Kyle Carpenter. <laughs> William Kyle Carpenter has one. always been fearless. Okay. Did you like that? He was our firstborn, and um, he was always very, very energetic, and he had quite the personality. Kiss my baby! <laughs> in high school in Gilbert, South Carolina, Kyle's grit made him a standout on the football field. He was a running back, and it was just like a human wrecking ball. He never went down on the first hit. After graduation, Kyle enlisted in the Marine Corps. In July 2010, Kyle and his unit were deployed to Marja, a remote area of southern Afghanistan. Their mission? To root out Taliban insurgents. Nearly every patrol we were sending out was taking contact, getting into you know, several hour long firefights on a daily basis. November 21st, 2010, a relatively quiet morning. Kyle and Lance Corporal Nick Euphrasio are standing guard on the rooftop as their platoon rests inside. Yes, out of nowhere, grenades started landing inside the courtyard of our compound, three or four of them exploded there. We instantly you know, threw our gear on and started making our way outside. That's when the final grenade exploded on the roof. When I got to Kyle, he was laying face down in the corner of our post. Um, I grabbed his arm to try and roll him over, and when I did, he was covered in blood. He was missing most of his lower jaw. It was apparent way the damage was done to his body that, that he had jumped on it. In order to save his fellow Marine, Kyle had thrown himself in front of the grenade. Within minutes, he was medevac to the nearest base where he was declared PEA, patient expired on arrival. Doctors revived him, but Kyle's heart would stop twice more in the week it would take to get him to Walter Reed Medical Center outside Washington, D.C. He was placed in a medically induced coma. Five weeks later. The first thing I remember is waking up and seeing Christmas stockings hanging on my hospital room wall that my mom had hung to decorate my hospital room for Christmas. Of course, he still had a tube in and he couldn't talk real well, but he said, hey, dad. And that was just, wow. And, and you even have our 10 cards. Oh. But Kyle still faced months of rehabilitation and surgeries. He had lost his right eye. Most of his teeth had been blown out. And he had over 30 fractures in his right arm alone. He could barely sit up in bed. It seemed 20 years down the road, but laying in that hospital bed, one of my goals was I wanted to run a marathon. Every day, his goal was to get completely around the nurse's station. You know, and he might make it the second day, he might make it down to the room next door. Then he'd make it down to the third door. And he would be sweating and shaking and Man, when he made it all the way around the nurse's station, the whole fifth floor just erupted. July 2013, two and a half years after the grenade attack, 
Kyle Carpenter finally went home. I remember just running and very much being overwhelmed, not only from the fact that I was alive, my worst times in the hospital were behind me, and I could just run in the fresh air and just being able to not worry about anything in that moment. Yes, sir. Fine, sir. How are you? On June 19, 2014, Kyle Carpenter became the second living Marine since the Vietnam War to receive the Medal of Honor. Kyle, you displayed a heroism in the blink of an eye that will inspire for generations. Valor worthy of our nation's highest military decoration. Kyle Carpenter should not be alive today, but he is, and he's a hero an inspiration, and a marathon. Every mile that passed and as hard as it got, I just thought maybe I'm, I'm touching one person by crossing the finish line. I'm proud to be a Marine. I'm proud of those that have raised their right hand those who have sacrificed to earn the right to wear the sacred cloth of our nation. Freedom is a powerful and beautiful thing, 